All right, today was a fun day because I got to spend some time with two of Lotus's new electric cars. Yeah, that Lotus, the one that's known for making ultra light sports cars and things like that, the ones that made the chassis for the original Tesla Roadster. Um, it's kind of the antithesis of what we know Lotus to be. Lotus is typically making the lightest weight stuff, but this is, it just shows how obvious the electrification of the future of cars is. They're going right to electric, not even hybrids. So there's two out. There's an SUV that's been out on the road for a couple months now, and then there's a car, a sedan that is brand new, just got revealed. So they both look really sick, and the names are both really tough, but the, the sedan is called the EMEA, E-M-E-Y-A. I got to sit in it, look around it, take a first look. That's the super sporty one. But then the uh, SUV, I got to drive. Uh, it's a little bit taller, but that's called the Electra, and that's one that's the more like wider appeal version. So this is it, the EMEA, and it's Honestly, it looks sick. Matter of fact, the three biggest things that I noticed just around the outside of this car are, one, it's a really good looking car. Two, there's a lot of tech, but also a lot of analog. And then three is, it just seems like there's a lot of moving parts, like a lot of moving parts, maybe some unnecessary. You'll see what I mean. So yeah, first of all, clearly a good looking sedan, this thing, I don't think it has a bad angle. It's got like all these nice shapes and proportions all the way around. The driver sits pretty far forward, so kind of similar to a mid-engine car. The headlights are dope. It's got this twin daytime running light happening with these nice animations right above the actual headlights. I believe they're uh, LED matrix headlights. And then across the back, there's a huge bar all the way across that actually doubles as a charge progress indicator. That shows real progress when the car is plugged in. So that's cool. There's carbon fiber everywhere from the rear splitter at the bottom of the side skirts to the front splitter. We'll get to the interior in a second, but there's carbon fiber there too. And then there's these huge sporty wheels. These are 22 inch lightweight performance wheels wrapped in what looks like a Michelin Pilot Sport EV LTS, which I've never heard of this tire before, but it's it's got all kinds of Pilot Sport 4S vibes, probably with some like lower rolling resistance optimizations. But these are some massive 305 millimeter wide tires on the back. And you can clearly see the high-performance carbon ceramic brakes at all four corners, too. This thing is not messing around. Now, when I say that there's a lot of moving parts in this car, <laughs> stick with me here. It gets kind of crazy. So, first of all, the door handles this is pretty normal. They sit flush with the car until you get up to it with the key, and then they pop open. We've seen that before. But that's it. That's a moving part. Then the power trunk lift gate is also very common, but that's another moving part. Good to see that there's a lot of space in here and even a little room for some charging accessories and a little sub trunk area. But then the charge port cover is motorized instead of just a normal door. A little extra, but you know, I guess it's nice to see in a car of this premium price. Then the, the car has LiDAR sensors all the way around for self-driving tech, but those cause a lot of drag when they're sticking out all the time. So just like the door handles, the ones on the front right, front left, and the top will also retract into the top and the sides of the car when they're not in use, which is, again, another moving part. Then there's an active rear wing, actually uh, sort of a pair of rear wings you can see in there, that creates downforce, keeps the car planted at higher speeds, and that, along with some moving parts below the car at the front and the back, are going to be really good for stability. But then even the front of the car, even the grill up here, has a bunch of these smoothly moving parts to open and close the front so it can be closed for less drag and better efficiency or open for high-performance driving to let more air through to cool the brakes and the batteries. And then the cherry on top is the power opening doors. So all four doors you can open from either the display in the car or from an app, or just by pulling the door handle a little bit and they will sense how much room they have and just motorized open as much as they can. And of course they can close with a button press as well or just by putting your foot on the brake. But hey, now we're in this interior. All right, so first of all, ignoring the fact that this is a right-hand drive car, because this is a one-of-one one Lotus prototype, and that's how they start things off, uh, there's a ton of tech all around this car, just absolutely loaded. And so I just want to show you guys some of the highlights, most of which I really like, some of which I have some questions about. So first of all, let's start with the screens. There's an OLED screen back behind the steering wheel here, shows your speed and range and stuff. There's a nice pretty thin bezeled OLED in the center, which is really responsive. It's running Unreal Engine, I am told, and that's a twin model of the car right there with all the controls, which I'll get to in a second. Then there's another screen over there on the left, passenger screen, right? Then there's an HUD, 
behind the steering wheel, which is apparently a 55 inch equivalent field of view. I don't know exactly how to measure that, but it looks pretty crisp from where I'm sitting. Then there is a Qi wireless charger in here. There is uh, your HVAC controls, which is just physical buttons. And then a bunch of LED lights that respond to the physical button presses, which is kind of neat. But then there's all this carbon fiber trim, an actual gear selector here, but also physical park and hazards. Then this cool cup holder design. So if you want cup holders, you got them. But if you don't, you get rid of them. Neat. And then there's some storage in the center and I'll get to the back seat later. Above my head is an electrochromatic roof that is fully tinted right now and fully adjustable. Not on this prototype, but on the screen, you'll be able to do that. That's super cool. There are a ton a ton of speakers all around this cabin from the side to the front to the doors i mean they're everywhere uh by kef i believe is the brand name here they are kef i've never heard kef speakers and i want to hear these but there's a ton of them so i have high hopes there's another one up at the front there but some stuff that i'm kind of curious about one you see in a lot of these prototypes instead of having mirrors it's got cameras and it's got these blind spot monitoring cameras right where you would look to see the mirrors. And they work super, super well, and they're actually legal in a lot of places, but not here yet. So I believe that basically they'll have a trim piece, maybe some metal here and an actual mirror in the car in the US, at least until that regulation changes. And then the other thing that I'm kind of curious about here is a steering wheel, really nice racing type steering wheel, Alcantara, little center notch up here. And then there's some paddle shifters. And when I looked at these, I was like, oh, this is nice. These are metal. And the left side is regen up and down. So you can change the amount of regenerative braking. And on the right side, drive mode selector up and down. That's pretty fire. Voice controls as well. Regular stocks for headlights and blinkers. But okay, here's the part that I'm a little bit mixed about. I'm kind of torn because this here is sweet. This is the smoothest UI. I've uh, so far really ever seen in any car for all your controls, but you can change your driving modes here from track to sport to individual. As I do that, you get a whole bunch of settings changing. The suspension height is changing. Even the seat, it changes the amount that it's hugging me. So I'm in sport right now. I'm gonna hit that track button. Let's see if you can see it. Oh, you can't really see it, but it started hugging me more, like bolstering me more into the seat. That is super cool. But then this is the HVAC controls. So we've seen this before. You've got your uh, actual vents here for the HVAC. They're all around the car like normal. But if you wanna change the direction that the air flows, it's on the touchscreen again. So it's kind of this weird mix of, oh, I can change my temperature at any time really easily here. Changes red to go up, blue to go down, love that. But then if I wanna turn off a vent, it's a, it's a touchscreen thing. So not in love with that, but that's the way they've decided to do it here. And then a whole bunch of other controls here for just car stuff in general. You can change all the ambient lighting colors. There's LEDs all over the cabin. It's red now, now it's blue, now it's pink. You can do whatever you want here and the entire cabin responds. All your vehicle controls up here and opening and closing the trunk and even changing the arrow. So on the back of the car, if you wanna just put up the rear spoilers because you like the way they look, you can do that. Uh, I am super into how responsive this is. I have a feeling it's gonna be much better for the final customer because they'll actually be able to connect to the internet and do navigation and things like that, but generally good to see it. So I'm in the back seat now. Couple things again that I notice really nice build quality still speakers everywhere pretty good amount of headroom i'm also behind a 6.3 driving position and there's a good amount of knee room here but the floor is really high and there's not much space underneath the seat here so i do feel like i can't extend my legs very much i'd be comfortable here for a little bit but not any type of long road trip again it's a driver's car i'm not shocked by that but that's something i've noticed but then ton of carbon fiber here this huge electrochromatic roof all the way behind my head. These seats are really nice, lots of materials, and they're kind of buckety, not full bucket, but they're kind of buckety in a sporty way, which I like. Then they've got this screen here with the controls. So this is uh, this is the two seat 
rear option. They will have a three seat version, but as of right now, if you pick the two seat sort of executive seat option, this whole center column is taken up here. There's even more speakers in here, more fancy cup holders and LED lights and ventilation and controls for the ventilation is by this touchscreen. Here's another moving part for you. Hit that button right there. And this sort of elevates, again, carbon fiber trim, really high quality, but it's another moving part. <laughs> then you've got this nice, super smooth storage. I mean, that's that might be the smoothest center storage I've ever seen, it's totally silent. And then look behind me, there's like a water bottle holder, maybe one or two water bottles in there. It stays open, spring load shut, super cool. This is a nice rear seat, especially for a car that again is, you know, 900 plus horsepower, super sporty, bucket seats, driver focused, racing features, but uh, not an entirely terrible back seat. Respectable. But honestly, who cares about the back seat? This is a driver focused car after all. That's why it has dual motors and 900 plus horsepower. That's why it does zero to 60 in under three seconds. That's why it has carbon ceramic brakes and custom tires and active aero and active air suspension. In addition to the real pass-through vents at the front underneath the headlights and at the back. Like if I had the car wow stick of truth here, you would see that these vents are very real. All of this is part of Lotus's DNA of making driver's cars. So, you know, to feel that for myself, it was time to switch to actually driving around an electric Lotus. This time, the SUV, the slightly higher off the ground Lotus Elettra. So first thing I actually notice is there are one, two, three, four levels of regen. Off, one, two, or three. And all the way up on three in tour mode, it's in like one pedal driving. It's basically, you can let off the accelerator and this thing will come all the way down slowly to a stop. But when I'm in sport mode, I realized the regen is not as strong. You can't really one pedal drive in sport mode. The maximum regen you get is not as strong, which is interesting. It reminds me kind of of somewhere in between the Taycan because of the handling and the EV6 GT for its impressive acceleration and just fun driving characteristics despite being high off the ground. But the thing about driving a, an electric car is you can never really say it feels light. It doesn't feel light, all right? Sorry, Lotus, it doesn't feel light. Sorry, Lotus fans. This is gonna be the first Lotus somebody drives where they're like, well, it can't really hide how heavy it is. But the suspension, I think what you really find is it's stronger and, and more technically impressive in the way it handles how much weight is being thrown at it. So it's still a good suspension. It's still good steering. It's just not the same as a really lightweight car would feel. I actually kind of wish that the screen in front of the steering wheel was bigger. Most tachometers and like dashboard screens behind the steering wheel are bigger than this. The air suspension adjusts apparently a thousand times per second and very quickly too. Like it can change ride heights from the lowest to the highest and back to the lowest in like a second or two. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the steering, you can go from sport to tour. You can change active rear spoiler to be sporty but i always leave it in sport power why ever turn the power down so okay i have listened to the speakers now and they're really good really really loud there's there's also a ton of them like there are i think several subwoofers i don't know the exact layout but there's a dolby atmos setup there are speakers in this middle console here speakers around me speakers above me speakers behind me when the bass is all the way up, I can see the mirror rattling. Like it's it's a loud, very, very solid speaker system. But I think that's what people, when they pay for, they want to hear. This is good. It's also got spatial audio support. Sounds really good. And of course, the main thing that's kind of like an X variable with these is the range. Uh, it's basically going to look somewhere between 260 miles to like 300 miles, depending on your wheel size. So this has got the huge 23 inch wheels on it. And it's showing me with a full battery in touring mode, like 275 miles of range. Uh, if you put it in sport mode, you won't get as much, but if you had 20 inch wheels, you could get even more. So you're looking at, yeah, up to probably 300 miles of range. Lotus right now is not yet on the list of car companies who have signed up to use Tesla's NACS port. 
And so this one, as of right now, behind yet another moving part, is a CCS port, and it will do 350 kilowatt charging, and that'll get it from like 10 to 80% in like 15 minutes or something crazy. It's very fast. It's a 100 kilowatt hour battery. Very fast charging. But I do wonder if you want to get something like this. If you're going to road trip, you probably do want to hear that it will support NACS. As of right now, it won't. But the one thing I did hear it will support at some point, ideally with a software update. I don't know if these have gotten software updates yet, but they say that they will add Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I believe that is also wireless, so your phone can sit on the wireless charger here and you'll have those two things available to you. As of right now, this shipping card doesn't have that and the ones that I played with don't have that, but fingers crossed. Fingers on the steering wheel though. This is a nice steering wheel. Wow, wow, you know what else is crazy? You can actually feel when it shifts gears. So there are two gears. This is similar to the Taycan again. Uh, it's dual motors, front motor and rear motor and the rear motor has two speeds. And when you, let me see what speed it happens, but you can actually feel the shift between first gear and second gear. Let me get a little bit of room. Okay, it's like, it's a little over the speed limit that it happens, but you can feel that difference, that little shift. I don't know if it's intentional that they added that shift, but you can feel the shift. All right, one track mode, full acceleration. It's got it. It's got it. Man, if you if you really want an electric SUV, if that's specifically what you're in the market for, as of right now, there's not a ton of options. But of your options, I mean, you have Ionic 5, you have EV6, you have a lot of fifty to $70,000 options, and then you kind of get up to like Tesla Model X Plaid, Rivian R1S, and this. And of those, this is this is the most fun to drive. This is more fun to drive than the Tesla. The Model X does accelerate harder, no doubt about it. I am ruined by the Plaid's triple motor powertrain acceleration, but that thing is nowhere near as stable, nowhere near as comfortable driving, nowhere near as good handling as this. And this is definitely more fun to drive. So if you're gonna spend more, I love the R1S. That's my favorite in this segment of what they do, but this is the most fun to drive. And that's what it's made for. I'm impressed. I have my doubts, obviously, about uh, a lot of the moving parts being a little bit unnecessary and a lot of the extra things that this car does that it doesn't have to do. But that's kind of the point of getting into cars up in this price, this 80 to 100 plus thousand dollar car. When it's a Lotus, when it's a sports vehicle, you want it to feel special. And this does a lot of that. And it just kind of speaks to the whole electrification of everything that every car company is doing across the board. Doesn't matter who, doesn't matter if it's Lotus, the company who you thought would never make a heavy car ever, everyone's doing it. And uh, it's just a matter of how they do it. And I think they've done this pretty well for their first try, not gonna lie. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Peace.